Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon everyone. Welcome to another episode of Ramadan Spirit, live from Dubai. And we are live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from Dubai. Thursday, Friday, uh, we're going to Riyadh, and then uh, Saturday, Sunday in the UK. And um, I am happy, alhamdulillah, that we are, mashallah, and this is the 10th day of Ramadan. Yes. So, and it's, it's going by very, very fast. Alhamdulillah. Um, you know, it's, it's not that difficult, subhanAllah, so giving up the food. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling very happy. I'm feeling very, you know, even though at, you know, by 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, you kind of like your, your physique is, you know, your physical strengths are going down. But alhamdulillah, like the spirit is, is, is really high, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So um, if you missed our shows, our previous shows, you can check them on YouTube, Ramadan Spirit. And we had some amazing guests, Dr. Mandur, Brother Asif, uh, and also Ahmed Hamid. And we are continuing with the amazing topics. And today specifically is like a special episode, I would say, because we have our uh, respected guest, Dr. Reverend Juan. How are you, doctor? I'm fine, and it's wonderful to be with you today. Thank you for coming on our show. It's my joy to be with you. And we also have Brother Ahmed Hamid. Assalamu alaikum. So um, we wanted to make this show a bit special. So last week, I kind of you know, said, Brother yeah, Ahmed, you know, we need to make a little bit of an interfaith, you know, uh, to bring the people together. Because sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran specifically when it comes to Ramadan, Ya ladina amanu, kutib alaykum siyam, kama kutib ala ladina min qablikum. So Allah SWT says they will prescribe for you fasting as it was prescribed for those before you. And as the Mufassirin say, this is the Jews and the Christians are the sure. people of the book. Sure. Why? لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That you may find or you know, uh, achieve uh, taqwa or piety, righteousness, uh, God-fearing. So Dr. Yeah. Reverend uh, Ruan, can you please introduce yourself for the audience? Yes. Um, I am the senior chaplain of the chaplains of Dubai, Sharjah with the Northern Emirates and the church came to be here uh, since the um, late 60s. Wow. And uh, the Holy Trinity Church, which is the mother church, came to be established um, with uh, the benevolent gift of uh, Sheikh Rashid, His Highness, Sheikh Rashid, who gave us the land. And since then, the Anglican Church has been in Dubai and then across the other Emirates. So I am the chief priest, if you like. Okay. Um, titled Senior Chaplain of the uh, Chaplains of Dubai, Sharjah with the Northern Emirates. And you are originally from? Uh, I'm originally from Sri Lanka. Actually, and, and you spent some time? Uh, uh, for the last 30 years I was uh, in New Zealand and in Australia where I served um, seven churches and then also taught at university uh, teaching theology and uh, interfaith dialogue sure. and studies in religion. So this is nothing new to you? This is uh, <laughs> <laughs> my forte. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. Yes. So doctor, yeah. today we'll be speaking about uh, uh, fasting, about uh, fasting between two faiths. Now we know very uh, you know, clearly, as you know and I know, that there's uh, a lot of important differences between Islam and Christianity, <coughs> uh, mainly around theology. Uh, and there's also a lot of similarities. And today we want to focus on those similarities. Sure. Um, so I want to... Um, Start also with you know bringing Brother Ahmed Hamid in, and Mashallah he has a lot of uh, uh, background in interfaith dialogues, and um, Brother Ahmed, let's start with uh, with you Inshallah, and then we'll move on to re to give the reverence more time. Um, when it comes to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Kama uh, kutiba adim qablikum," can you discuss a little bit about uh, this verse? Sure, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'in. You see, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this ayah, that is a key reference for us to uh, clarify that fasting is not a new thing. Right. It was there, existent uh, at that time as well, and it was practiced by all the previous prophets. Mm -hmm. However, we do not know exact way, uh, you know, the rituals, the exact practices, but then we know that the command, the order was there at that time as well. Now, uh, in reference to that, we could find that, you know, in, in, uh, in the Bible, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, like for example, we can find in the Old Testament, you know, uh, book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 28, it talks about the fasting mm -hmm. of Moses, peace be upon him, that mm -hmm. he was there with God 40 days and 40 nights, he did not eat bread, he did not drink water. 
So we, we find that reference with regards to the, uh, you know, Moses, peace be upon him. Similarly, we find it uh, with Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, uh, mentioning in, you know, uh, in the Bible again, in the New Testament, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he fast for mm -hmm. 40 days mm -hmm. and when he was tempted by the devil. Mm -hmm. So we, we find that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, uh, you know, min qablikum la uh, min qablikum, uh, before you, yeah. the, the fasting was there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, however, uh, the most of the time we find that, you know, uh, these percepts or these uh, commands or the practices, we find that uh, was linked with uh, something called as atonement. People mm -hmm. want to for, f be forgiven right. and that's the reason, they, you know, they, they want to fast. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Islam basically gives the reason, as you mentioned, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ which means you need to fast so that you may gain God consciousness, mm -hmm. God piety, and that is the key element in the house of Islam. Mm -hmm. I mean, by uh, all meaning, uh, when we fast, we just don't fast, you know, by refraining ourselves from food, drinking, and desires, but mm -hmm. then the whole spirituality, the whole, you know, environment within your own self, it transforms and it gets closer to Almighty God. That's, that's excellent. Dr. Evan Rowan, um, in Christianity, what is the, the main uh, reason for fasting? And can you tell us about how do you regard fasting? Yes. I think Ahmed basically s summarized it. Okay. Because there's, it, it, those are the exact reasons for which Christians also fast. To uh, purge ourselves from impurities, mm -hmm. to align ourselves with God, and to be distanced from the things that keep us in bondage, the things that are of this world, and to have that time with God, aligned with God. So the purpose of um, fasting are those. And of course I could go on to elaborate saying in doing so that we come closer to God, mm. that we become more righteous, we become uh, more like God in whose image we have been created, mm -hmm. or in other words, through having close communion with God, that image can be seen mm -hmm. or, uh, or demonstrated in our lives, that we carry our Creator's image and that we belong to Him mm -hmm. and that we um, continue to um, foster that, to cultivate that goodness in us. Mm -hmm. by aligning ourselves to the Divine Spirit, to, div to God. As, as, as Brother <coughs> Hamid, uh, word, I think, you know, obviously the words, uh, the choice of words might be different yeah, for us. Then but the idea you. is the same. Uh, right, yes. uh, but basically to, uh, <coughs> to, ach to achieve that, that God conscious. God consciousness, and, uh, yes. Um, usually, obviously, Muslims are a bit careful when we speak in the, in the image of God as, as to what it means. And, uh, but without a doubt, it's, it's, it's basically to, to get closer to, uh, to God. Taqwa yeah. in Islam is, is, is to, to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of your relation with Him. Um, and you mentioned there the issue of, of atonement and repentance. And we know that that's one of the things that, that Ramadan and fasting have, has to deal with yeah. is the issue of people you know, repenting uh, to God and coming back to God's you know, to God if they've, you know, obviously you have a whole year. And that's a beautiful thing though, that fasting is not only for Ramadan. Yes, in no, Ramadan it's right. like, it's a must. <coughs> it's, 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 there's no, there's no choice. But fasting is, is you know, can be done throughout the days sure. and so on. Uh, Dr. Ruan, um, tell us a bit about the way uh, you fast or the way Christians fast. I know mean, there might be some differences uh, between the different denominations of Christianity, but how, in, in general, how do Christians fast usually? Before I say that, let me further qualify what I said earlier, which I think is very fundamental okay. to Christian faith also. Um, the idea of atonement and us continuing to be uh, mindful of our sinfulness mm -hmm. is very much according to the Christian understanding and of course according to the Jewish understanding also based on the, in the Old Testament, if not mm -hmm. the First Testament covenant of God that our sinfulness is, is is a, is a result of us being estranged from God right. or estranged from what the goodness was when God created us to be in communion with Him. So mm -hmm. that is what I meant. Mm -hmm. So through fasting, um, we become much more conscious mm -hmm. of that brokenness, mm -hmm. that estrangement, that alienation, right. and therefore a sense of um, 
confessing our brokenness, confessing our sinfulness, alienation, so that we can uh, a question, be atoned. Uh, yeah. A question. Would, would uh, <coughs> fasting uh, expiate sins or uh, allow for atonement or, or not in Christianity? According to the Christian understanding, fasting makes it possible for us to acknowledge our sinfulness. Okay. And of course, the atonement comes from God alone. Mm -hmm. But at least our acknowledgement right. is there so that God could atone us, God could forgive us, because it is not you know, blindly asked for, but asked out of contrition and repentance and uh, profound pre pre preparation for God's uh, forgiveness. Wait, before I ask you again, what you know, the, the way of fasting, I don't know if you've seen, there's, there's a video circulating around getting a lot of views now. It's a Christian man who before appeared on YouTube and he was, you know, learning Arabic. And now he appeared a couple of days saying that he, he's, he's fasting. You know, he's saying that his reason is to uh, bring Christians and Muslims closer to, you know, to, to interfaith, to, to facilitate interfaith dialogues. And he was talking about how he feels when he fasts, right? That he says that his mind becomes clearer. His, but he also highlights something that was very amazing. He said that I realized something that I realized before. Um, he said I, I found some ego problems in me, and I couldn't see that when I was not fasting. Correct. Uh, what's uh, what's? Uh, I would ag <coughs> agree with that point because I think our separation from God happens because of our uh, of, uh, because of our um, pride, mm -hmm. because we affirm us to be the center of the world, if not ours, but the whole world. Mm. So that is the hubris, the word uh, that is used to describe that state of uh, pride, uh, uh, alienation from God. So ego is another word that is dis used to describe that hubris mm. and our um, affirmation of self against God. So that is, I think it's a very uh, true statement to say that you become much more aware, aware of your ego, uh, which is seen as separate from God, or being se or separated from God. So I think it's a, it's a good acknowledgement uh, in the process of us purging of our sinfulness. Sure. Before I wanted to move on to Ahmed, uh, but I want to remind our viewers that you can uh, give us a call and show the numbers on the screen if you have a, a question <coughs> for Dr. Reverend Juan, for Ahmed Hamid and myself on the topic, inshallah. Uh, polite, inshallah. Obviously, this is, you know, uh, interfaith here. Uh, so <coughs> please, if you have a question about fasting specifically in, in the Christian faith or in, in the Muslim world, the similarities or differences, you can give us a call, inshallah. Um, Ahmed Hamid. Can you please um, highlight on what are some other, uh, obviously Allah SWT says about taqwa and God consciousness, getting closer to God, uh, being more aware, uh, realizing the ego issues and so on, repenting, coming closer to Allah SWT. But what are the other benefits of fasting uh, when it comes to, you know, the international community maybe, the, the, the world community of maybe, you know, it's, it's not just the Muslims and the, and the Christians, but there might be other people out there. Uh, Right. Now, uh, you know, everything in Islam has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, fasting is again, uh, so to call, is a systematic programming towards righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, when we actually fast, the fasting is made in a such a way, is the practice itself is made such a way that it, it, it basically gives so many benefits. Uh, number one being what mentioned by Allah Almighty is, is to gain taqwa. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, other benefits are also to purify yourself, mm -hmm. you know, in this very month, you know, uh, we try to purify ourselves. Uh, generally, people they are in, indulged, you know, engaged in so many other things. So you're talking about physical pur uh, purification it's, or spiritual? It's both. Spiritual, we said. It's, it's both. both. Right. It's both actually. <coughs> right. Uh, so spiritually, you know, uh, I mean, from your own self, you uh, you have that self-realization when you fast. From the perspective of your body as well, uh, I mean, there are so many scientific benefits which are linked with uh, with the Islamic way of fasting. So uh, from from the body uh, as well, I mean, you get so many benefits uh, of doing fasting. Uh, other than that, I mean, the impact that you actually get when you fast, uh, you know, or your whole personality, it, it changes. I mean, as we discussed, you know, or even the youngest among us who is not obliged to fast and he fasts, 
we, we I know. have my little daughter right now. She's seven, and she started fasting after right. three days. Fantastic. She's they, so uh, happy, you know. She yeah. doesn't want to give up. So my, my wife told her today, you know, take a break today, you know. And she's like, you know, she's sad. Like, she's not fasting, right. but she's so sad, yeah. The amazing thing is, I mean, uh, uh, you're not in front of her. I mean, your, your wife is not in front of her. There is a kind of, you know, uh, link in the spiritual awareness that, uh, you know, even our youngers, they have uh, uh, linked with the fasting. So that gives you a total change in the personality when you fast. Now, these are some of the benefits. Uh, Dr. Reverend Rowan, when it comes to <coughs> the international community, the world, we know there's people in Sri Lanka, there's people in Africa, there's people in India who are starving. They yes. have no option but to fast. Yes. How do we see fasting aligned with that when it comes to, you know, recognizing that we are all from Adam and these are, you know, people that are, you know, brothers and sisters in humanity, if you, if you want to call it. How do we look at that from... Uh, fasting in the, in the Christian practice also linked in um, being in communion with others, mm -hmm. if not um, standing in solidarity with others if not identifying with others and others' sufferings. And one of the things that we do as a, as a result of that identification and standing in solidarity with, uh, when, when, when you yourselves are not fasting, you know, the only thing you can do is to st stand in solidarity with someone, but through fasting, it helps to identify with those who are fasting and suffering in that respect. And the way Christians look at that ex experience is to um, use that opportunity of um, identifying with another to pray mm -hmm. and, to, and to be united in that prayer. And therefore, in the Christian practice of fasting, prayer is a very important element through, because as, as a result of being justified, be justified before God through your contrition of your sins mm -hmm. and aligning yourself with God, purging yourself from all the impurities, m m impurities of the mind as well as of the body. Yeah. It, it aligns once again you with God and that gives the opportunity to pray and mm -hmm. to be in, in communion with God. And in doing so, pray for those who suffer, those who are, are in those situations around the world and that is something we do. Brother Ahmed, uh, how does fasting push the community <coughs> to, you know, I mean, as the Reverend was saying, that you recognize that, you know, uh, there's other people who are suffering and you're praying as Allah uh, the Prophet said that من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا and also من قام رمضان right so this is fasting and prayer the same words sure. the same thing so as, as the Reverend said you know it's fasting and then there's also prayer, which is a common thing, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very important to, because, and, and you feel it, you feel it that when you fast, your concentration, your prayer, and the depth of your prayer is, is without a doubt much, much better. You know, you really... More stronger. Yeah, stronger. You're really into it, right? Correct. Uh, you know, you're hungry, uh, you're feeling it. But the difference is that we know, you, myself, we know that we will break our fast. Yes. At some point. We have it in the back of our mind that at this time, you know, we will have some food. But there's a lot of people who don't have that. And I remember there was a, one of the people from Somalia called one time, one of the sheikhs, one of the scholars was given a show like this. And he asked a question which made the scholar, you know, come down to tears. He was crying because he said, he, it was, a, a, he was a, a, a jurisprudence question. He said, is our fast valid if we don't break our fast? Because we don't have we want to break our mm. fast. Mm. And he just started crying, you know, like he was just in tears. So w is fasting pushing us uh, to, to do something about those who are, you know, uh, not... Right. Well, definitely, definitely. So, uh, one sorry, of the one, sorry to call you because we, we have, have issues with Nigeria, so we have a call. Okay, we don't want to delay. <laughs> yes, Salaamu Alaikum from Nigeria. Alaikum <laughs> Just brother, before you start, please uh, your volume down from the TV. Okay, my question is, uh, what is the condition of a man? Okay, what is the condition of a man who do a service marriage in this Ramadan? 
Okay, I'll skip to repeat. And my second question is that is it allowed in family planning in Islam? Is, can is it allowed the family planning in Islam? Oh, family planning, okay. First question. Uh, can you repeat the first question, please? Okay, the first question is I say that. The first question is what is the position of a man, a Muslim man, who do a Sabbath marriage in this month of Ramadan? What is the position of Iman of a person who witnessed this month of Ramadan? Okay. I, 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 I it's unclear. I hope. Okay, so if you said the position of a man, a Muslim man who witnessed the month of Ramadan, is that if he fasts sincerely and repents and prays, as the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, that all his sins will be forgiven. This is with sincere repentance, you know, with uh, as as you know, uh, repenting with a pure heart and you know, aiming not to go back to those sins and so on. Like basically changing your life, Toba. You know, there's there's istighfar and then there's tawba, right? Like tawba has has a whole paradigm shift that you're actually changing your life. You know, you basically take this vow onto yourself that you know I'm not gonna go back to this. No doubt, human beings we're all sinners and we're gonna you know, as the Prophet said that kulu bani adam khata, every son of Adam is you know sins and makes mistakes, right? Uh, but we basically, it's 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 a beautiful thing that by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God loves those who repent. That's, that's something that when someone repents, uh, you know, it's, I know um, I was res lis recently listening to Dr. Gary Miller, and he was the, uh, he's a Muslim, uh, uh, you know, intellectual, but he was using the story of the prodigal son, right? Right. I mean, you know, that, that you know, uh, it's, it's like, it's the one that goes astray and comes back that, you know, that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very happy over, right? And uh, we have something very uh, similar uh, in, in Islam about the person who loses his uh, right. His uh, he's on a trip and he loses his provision and his his uh, his uh, cattle. I mean his camel, right? Um, I mean Subhanallah, it's, it's such a beautiful thing that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves us, you know, and He loves when we repent and we come back to Him. You know, uh, He waits for us uh, to go back to Him. And I believe the second question the brother was talking about family planning. Uh, we would ask you to contact Dr. Muhammad Salah, uh, ask Huda, which re responds to these kind of fiqh questions, inshallah. We'll take a break right now, uh, and we'll be back with uh, Dr. Ravan Ruan and with Brother Ahmed Hamid, inshallah, speaking about Christianity, Islam, fasting, and the commonalities between them uh, on Ramadan Spirit, live from Dubai. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan. Can you? Yeah, yeah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Welcome back. Ramadan Spirit. This is your, uh, your brother, Gabriel Romani. And we are joined by Dr. Reverend Ruan. Welcome again. And Brother Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Hamid again for the second uh, time during this Ramadan. Inshallah, I think we'll be continuing with you till the end, inshallah, inshallah. with a lot of great topics. I want you uh, not to forget, but to direct the viewers to your YouTube channel. Uh, you're having a series each day. I know I'm getting on WhatsApp, alhamdulillah. Maybe Dr. Uh, I mean, one can follow as well. I it's really good. They're short and they're like, they're really like deep, right? So uh, can you please uh, direct the audience to your YouTube channel? Sure. It's basically, you know, uh, as Allah Almighty says uh, in Surah Dhariyat, Surah number 51, that is chapter mm -hmm. number 51, verse number 55. Uh, mm -hmm. Remind them as the reminder benefits the believers. A lot of times we know that, you know, so many things we know already. I mean, the, the majority of the people, they know. But they need a small, you know, sweet reminder uh, mm -hmm. so that they can come back, as you were saying. So these uh, videos are very short, crisp. It has a message like, today we released a video, use your time before you lose your time. All right. You know, something yeah, like which is attractive and, uh, you know, it opens your eyes. So, right. so uh, these videos are basically available on the YouTube channel, uh, uh, you know, uh, youtube.com uh, slash Ahmed Hamid. That's mm -hmm. the channel okay. name. So they can, inshallah, basically share and watch it. Mashallah. Okay, so let's go back to our discussion. Uh, and I've asked uh, a question. It was about um, how would f now fasting and identifying that there's people in the world that are not fasting, how would that push us into action, more like a... A, a social work type of action, if you mind uh, commenting. It um, pushes you on two directions, I would say. Of course, for social 
uh, welfare. Mm. That is to um, give yourself to um, help in people, helping people in their sufferings. The second um, thing it does is to drive you to strive for justice. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think both are, of course, you know, linked, but those are the two um, aspects that drive you uh, as a result of um, fasting and becoming more conscious of injustices and, 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 and the sufferings of people. Mm, it drives you. It drives you. Right. Uh, also, I think, uh, you know, uh, the reason why do we fast, uh, you know, uh, it is uh, for Almighty God. So it's God's creatures and they need to be taken care of by those who are well off. Mm. So, and this is very practical and very powerful way that you experience something which people are generally doing, you know, they're starving, you know, or day and day, day night. You experience that and then you practically emulate by putting yourself into action and help those who, who, who right. basically, you know, are in need of. And that basically is associated with, with one of the pillars of Islam, that is zakah. Mm. That's a regular, systematic charity that, you know, people are, uh, you know, giving. Okay, so we have a call, uh, Sharifa from Dubai. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I have a question regarding. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, somebody didn't pray in his life and he passed away. Can we make hajj for him? Or someone who didn't pray? Can he we didn't passed, pray in his he life and away. he passed away. Can we make hajj for him? Um, you know, as I said, uh, it's better these questions are directed to Dr. Muhammad Salah, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, he has a live show called uh, uh, Ask Huda, and he okay. can give you the full details, yeah, inshallah, oh, okay. if you don't mind, okay? May Allah oh, bless you. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so thank much. You, okay. Um, All right. So I was saying uh, it, it, it's very practical and powerful way that you experience something, mm. and then you drive to, to you know, establish justice and uh, in that also, again, as I was saying, there is one of the pillars of Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given as the foundation of Islam, that is zakah. That's a regular, uh, you know, charity by those who are eligible to pay, that is 2.5%. Mm. And I was... And that is uh, mandatory. That's Correct. mandatory right. by those who are eligible to pay. It's something like, I think, in the Christian alms, right? Alms, right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was told that, uh, you know, in the Forbes list, the, the richest, if the top 52 richest people, if they pay, regular 2.5 percent charity and it's not a lot 2.5 percent 2.5 percent i mean they, they just spend like that <laughs> so again it uh, would take care of the from what i know there the will whole be no world, poverty the no poverty and no you know, it, the, the earth will be economically balanced Spanish. see the injustice is is prevailing in the world why because the improper circulation of wealth mm. the richer is becoming you know more richer the poor becoming you poorer. know more poor so what is the way out i mean that needs to again be divinely guided and uh, it is regulated in the form of you know zakah in in islam mm. uh, there's another thing i would like to add what fasting does you for mm. others you okay. know, in, in terms of people's sufferings and and others who are fasting and that is uh, related to what we discussed earlier so fasting prepares you to pray for others mm -hmm. Now, some, uh, one of the things that I do quite regularly, especially in critical situations when mm. people ask for prayer, either before they go for a major operation or some major issue in their lives, in their family or something, when they ask me to pray, I would first fast mm -hmm. and pray for them. Mm -hmm. And most of those prayers are answered. Mm -hmm. It is because I think, you know, you can do that for on others' behalf. Mm -hmm when they cannot do that. Mm -hmm. So it's just the flip side, you know, people, some are fasting all the time because they don't have enough. But sometimes you have the situation where people have too much, too much and they don't have the time to do that and still want God to answer their prayers. Mm -hmm. So some, I find sometimes as a, as a priest, as someone appointed to serve God, me doing that on their behalf so, so let me understand. So would someone come to you and ask you to pray for them, but are they, they themselves praying for them themselves or they're not? They do, but perhaps they don't have the time, they don't have the commitment, they don't mm -hmm. have the... To pray. To pray mm -hmm. and even to fast. Mm -hmm. 
so I, sometimes I find myself doing that on their behalf and intercede for them before God I see. and pray for them. Um, and I think it is also that's part something of a bit different for us. Because, slightly different, yeah. Yeah, no doubt there's uh, there's the issue of uh, people asking for you to pray mm. uh, for them. Uh, but the first question we would, we would ask is, are you praying for yourself? Exactly. Man? Because God is, is is basically waiting. And without, I understand what you're saying, but you know, it's 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 a bit uh, strange that um, someone would Themself, not have time yeah. to pray for Correct. themselves, right? It's I mean, it's a commitment between. That's the that prayer, person and God. Right. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you get the opportunity sometimes to break it, it through. Sometimes it looks like they really don't want to do, have that. And right. that's the reason they don't give time sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but it, as as uh, you said, like in, in Islam, it's very, very powerful that when you pray for your own self. Mm. Because you know that pain within your heart. And when it comes out in words, Allah will answer. If not here, I mean the faith is, if not here, sooner or later, it will be answered. Mm. And that's how we, we rest ourselves. However, I mean, you can obviously, you know, ask, you know, those who are godly people to pray. No doubt. Uh, uh, the living godly people who are, uh, who are you know, uh, righteous. And at the same time, there's also, we find sometimes, for example, like, you know, the son is not so good. But... Um, the mother has always been praying for Correct. Him, right? Always interceding and always praying and asking Allah to protect him. And then the boy just miraculously changes his life at, you know, at a certain age, says, you know, I don't know how, but it was the mother always, always praying exactly. to God to guide and protect, you know, and forgive her, her son. So from, you know, from that point of view, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, Dr. Reverend Juan, can you please explain to us this? I, I asked this question before and I forgot it. How do Christians fast? Like the actual way, you know, for Muslims, we uh, we start uh, at the Fajr Adhan, the morning prayer uh, call, and till the, um, you know, at night, sun, uh, sun sunset. Set. How, how do the Christians fast? And Christians follow various forms of fasting, um, and usually more or less corresponds to what you do, mm. although there isn't a call for prayer and so on. But uh, people who are driven to fast establish patterns for themselves mm -hmm. unless they're living in a kind of a exclusive community of people who pray. You know, then, of course, there are set patterns uh, in monasteries, in places of convents for nuns and so on. There are set forms of prayer. But otherwise, a an average Christian would set a pattern for themselves. Um, Can you describe maybe? So a, a I would time? say you start the day uh, fasting and uh, may break it in the evening. So therefore there is that very close similarity. If not, as some Christians do during the season of Lent, mm -hmm. um, a time that, that we have set aside for repentance, for mm -hmm. self-examination and so on in the Christian calendar of the church every year, every year, 40 days, mm -hmm. 40 days. Some Christians use that as a kind of a uh, template. So you, you give up something, is that how Lent? Or many ways. So sometimes people would uh, give up on things as a commitment. Some would truly fast. Mm -hmm. Some would truly fast. And actually I know of Christians who would fast for all 40 days mm. without breaking it mm. and just depend on water. Right. You know, just to keep them alive. Mm -hmm. I know of people. Mm -hmm. So, how does it work? Like, they they drink water only throughout the day, and they fast, or yeah, for those who do for forty days, mm -hmm. would do that to just to sustain themselves. Okay. And and that's all they do. So but they one. wouldn't eat at all. Mm -hmm. And um, what are some other uh, ways of, of fasting? I mean, you, you said the, the, so. Basically, th th there is the way of fasting that. You don't eat anything from s before sunrise till sunset. Nothing. That's no right. drinking water. No eating anything. No. Okay. No. That's I think right. th there was uh, it was like a dry fast, or what they used to call. It. I'm not sure in the in the Orthodox Church. There's a name for it. I, I forget uh, right now. Right. And then there are also people who would give up f fasting on the day of prayer. Okay. Now here, I know many Christians who belong to the church here fast on a Friday. Okay. Whole day every Friday throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And some Christians fast on Sunday, which is the established day of prayer for them, the Sabbath. Right. So therefore it is practiced in that way also, as a constant practice to pray. 
Okay, so that was a lot of. Can I have a question? Yeah. Uh, how, how does it derive? I mean, from where does it derive this method or the way uh, of fasting? Uh, okay, okay, I'm going to interrupt you, and we're going to go for a break, and then so okay, okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> keep that question, inshallah. So we give the break, inshallah. Sure. We'll be right back. Exciting discussion. Very, uh, very interesting. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Welcome back, Ramadan Spirit. This is your brother Gibal Romani, and we are talking with our respected guests about uh, fasting. And uh, I, I believe you had a question uh, for the Reverend before uh, we broke. I was uh, uh, inquisitive about knowing uh, how do these methods, which are practiced today, derive from? I mean, fr is it from the Bible or how is it like? Various examples are in the Bible, but there isn't a kind of a prescription as such. Mm -hmm. So th most of the things that I just shared with you earlier are part of the tradition. Okay. The tradition plays a very big part in the Christian church and uh, most of these methods have been developed over the centuries by various people. Okay. Yeah. Right. So holy people okay. and holy men mm -hmm. and women. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to move on to... Uh, uh, ask you about uh, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, Isa uh, how, how did he fast? I mean, we know it's, there's some description of, his, of him fasting, and as Ahmed mentioned, what was his fasting like? Uh, like the, the classic example that we have is the 40 days him spending okay. in the wilderness uh, in preparation for his mission mm -hmm. in the world. So that is the classic example that we have. And the scriptures also from time to time um, refers to him uh, withdrawing himself to pray overnight mm -hmm. and so on. Now it doesn't say that he was fasting, but we could uh, think given his life and given the way in which his life was formed, uh, fasting was a very important part of Jesus' life. Mm. This is something very just interesting. Just, there. just to add that uh, I, I know the reference, like for example, uh, Jesus, you know, he fast, like uh, it's mentioned in Matthew chapter 4, verse 2, and Correct. Luke chapter 4, verse 2, where uh, it says Jesus fast for 40 days, yeah. you know, when, when he was tempted by the devil, and then he became, ang uh, you know, hungry. So uh, I believe the method that was there with regards to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is he used to fast, you know, the whole day. I mean, mm -hmm. there was yeah. no water, nothing. So I think that's the closest way that we could uh, derive, although there is no exact details, I think, mentioned, uh, you know, uh, in, in particular about the fasting. So, something very interesting that you said that he would uh, withdraw to pray at night, right? Which is something very beautiful because, yes. uh, um, you know, even that's something very important in Ramadan. Uh, when you fast and you break your fast at night, <coughs> it's not like the night becomes a party, you know, and then, no. you know, until <laughs> the morning and then you start fasting again. Which for some people might, you know, but that's not the correct way. The, the correct way is that the night is spent in prayer. There's some sleep and then there's prayer. Because the, right. the night prayer was very important uh, for all the prophets, you know, that, that this right. is a time where people are sleeping. This is a time of rest. And to be able to, to get yourself away from the comfort of the bed and to be able to, to be alone, you know. And that's one thing about the night prayer, the hajjud specifically, is that it's very encouraged to be done, you know, alone a lot of times where sure. we're, it's like no one's there. In, in community, sometimes, alhamdulillah, you pray, of course, with your community. But sometimes that there's that um, Solitude. risk. Seclusion. Yeah, yeah. Seclusion. yeah, so you need that seclusion. Because there's, there's risk when you're in community that, you know, you might be there for, okay, you for God, but, you know, there's other people there, so you might distract. be, be distracted, distracted a bit, right? Yes. Let's use it a kind term. Yes. But when you're by yourself, it's like there's no one else to see you. It's just you and God, right? Yeah. And it's just you and God speaking, complaining to him, you know, your, your mistakes, your confess confession, you know, uh, which is something very important. Um, I want to go back to the issue of um, atonement based on, on fasting, because we know in the, in the, Muslim, tr uh, you know, in the Muslim faith, uh, fasting atones. And we know there there's several um, hadith that the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God, uh, who forgive the sins of people in the day obviously outside as well but but this is like a specific time you know there's this this month has been chosen as the month that uh, you know scriptures were revealed in this month and inshallah we'll go to talk about this in in other episodes uh, but um, 
when it comes to that, uh, so this is my question, um, does this fasting uh, not just drive someone to repent only, but just the act of fasting, uh, like for example, I know that uh, in the Jewish tradition, the act of sacrifice itself, where people would put their hands on, 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 a, on a cattle or something, uh, and send it out in the, in the desert, right? and then there'll be a tone for that. Or, or something. So does that fasting atone as well, or, or is it only? I would say in the Christian tradition, uh, fasting is um, the atoning um, aspect is there. Mm -hmm. um, but more, and, and, and the process itself is atoning right, in atoning. that sense, mm -hmm. rather than being just one act after which you are forgiven. Mm -hmm. But in the Christian tradition, fasting is seen as a preparation for atonement mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, in Christ. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, related is the aspect of healing. Mm -hmm. uh, healing. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, because healing is also an atoning process. Mm -hmm. uh, even the word savior, salvation, comes from the, uh, the, the uh, root word to heal mm. uh, the rift between us and God mm. uh, and therefore the process of atonement and the process of healing are the two aspects that are highlighted in the process of um, fasting in the Christian tradition. Mm -hmm. And uh, last question as we are running out of time, we only have about a minute, um, I wanted to ask you about your your dress, because <laughs> we're matching today. Exactly. <laughs> so I wanted you to maybe explain to the audiences too, because you, you know, uh, you have to understand that the Muslims, when they look at, of course we have fundamental differences, uh, when you spoke about atonement in Christ, you know, that we don't, you know, we believe in atonement in, in God himself, you know, and, uh, which we, you know, is totally different than, than Christ. Uh, but there's a lot of, when the Muslims look at, for example, a lot of, you know, the Christian uh, tradition, they'll find a lot of Islam into it. For example, you know, the way, uh, Jesus, you know, the beard of Jesus, for example. His, his prayer, as you said, at night. His fasting of not eating, you know. So, because we, we believe in Jesus as, as Muslims, right? So, can you explain the dress? I mean, where is this coming from? Because right? that's something that, uh, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. Jesus was a Middle Eastern. So, and the same tradition, you know, you are people of the... So, so you're keeping the tradition of you're Jesus. You're keeping the tradition of Jesus and the tradition of... Uh, our forefathers uh, whom, with whom we are related. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, I really yes, like, so I really four. like, it. I have a black <laughs> one, like the same size I said. I wanted yeah, to. So, therefore, <laughs> the white is, of course, you know, the signifies pu purity. purity. Right? And that was the Prophet Awesome said that's his favorite Correct. color. Yeah. Uh, it was white. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Anruan, uh, for coming. Thank you. It was uh, my joy to be with inshallah, you. Inshallah, hopefully, we will see you again in, 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 the, in the future. Please, sir. Uh, Brother Ahmed, Jazakallah uh, yeah. khair again, thank and so we will see you again next week, inshallah, inshallah. with uh, another episode of Ramadan Spirit. Uh, with uh, dear audience, uh, we will see you again tomorrow. Uh, we will this be discussing uh, the Battle of Badr, inshallah, with uh, Brother Amir in the series of It Happened in Ramadan, so Islamic uh, history in Ramadan. And inshallah, we hope that you will join us again live from Dubai. This is your brother Gibar Romani. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.